Tip number 25, bringing the right customer in. So many shops have car count as their number one KPI. I need cars, I need cars, I need cars. And they forget that when they bring the wrong customer into their business, either through the way that they market themselves, the way that they look, um, or what, for whatever reason, that they have to work so much harder with that customer. So for instance, I'm gonna run um, an ad and I'm gonna run 9.99 oil change ad. And I think most people in the industry today wouldn't do that, but I've seen some people doing that even today. So I'm gonna run this very cheap, inexpensive oil change ad. The customer that I want, is that gonna be the person that's gonna answer that ad? Is the customer that's gonna answer the 9.99 oil change ad and show up gonna be someone that wants to take care of their car, understands that if they maintain the car, it's going to bring value to them. Uh, are they going to have money to uh, spend on that car? And are they going to be loyal to me? If I treat them well, if I do a good job, are they going to come back and spend money on their car over and over and over to take care of their car? Now in my world, um, and obviously I've got my own glasses on, my own colored glasses, I see the world in my own way, um, if you send me a 9.99 oil change, um, I'm not coming to your shop. In some ways, that's going to make me not show up at your shop. And I'm probably the perfect customer because I come in and I have older cars. My cars are five to eight years old. Um, I maintain them. When the, the shop says I need something, I take care of it. I understand the value of maintaining the car. And some days, not every day, but most days I have the money to spend on the car such that I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you bring in that $9.99 oil change customer, are they going to be loyal? The next time they need something on their car, a service, it has a leak or, or it throws a belt, are they going to come back to you? Are they going to show up and go, hey, uh, please check over my car and tell me what I need and then uh, let me buy it so that I can have a vehicle that runs well? In my world, the answer is probably no. They're going to be looking for the next cheap oil change. And if I'm not running one, if I'm not running a cheap ad, they're not going to show up. Now, let me tell you the value of finding the right customer. So in a marketing uh, class, if we were teaching a marketing class from, uh, say, Marketing 101, one of the first things we would do is define our product. We'd say, hey, here's the product that we want to sell. Uh, in our case, we've chosen automotive service and repair, which is parts and labor um, and along with automotive service and repair comes some other things. It comes uh, with a relationship, it comes with a facility. Uh, is the facility comfortable uh, for your clients? Does it speak about who you are? Um, you know, obviously your website, uh, does that speak about who you are? But if you bring someone in who wants a good relationship, who lives or works within your sphere of influence, and you do a good job for them, then they're much more likely to come back. They're, they're not looking for a coupon. They're actually looking for a relationship, a shop that they can trust and feel good about. When you bring a coupon customer in, and, and you know, uh, there'll be some naysayers out there that are gonna say, yeah, but I do get some good customers off of coupons. Well, I always say that even a blind dog finds a fire hydrant every once in a while, meaning that yes, you may get someone walking in the door who's really a value-based customer and not a discount-based customer who says, wow, this is a great experience and I want to come back here, but that's going to be few and far between. It's not going to be in the numbers that you need. So back to my marketing class. We've defined our product. Uh, now we need to define our customer. What type of customers do we really want to do business with? Eh, I'd like to do business with people that are um, probably 30 today uh, uh, to probably about 65, maybe even 70. Uh, I'd like to do business with people that um, own their own home, although that might be changing because a lot of the millennials, a lot of the, um, um, what's the new generation, the Gen Z, um, are probably going to live in condos or apartments. Um, I'd like to do business with um, someone that's got a family, uh, two cars, the kind of cars that I want to work on. So um, I'm not a Kia guy, a Hyundai guy, I'm not even a VW guy. Um, I like uh, uh, 
I like to work on different cars. I like to work on um, BMW, Mercedes, Audi. Uh, don't mind working on Toyotas and Hondas and Lexus. But, um, you know, I define the kind of customer that I want because my assumption is that when I bring that customer in my shop, that not only will they like what I have to offer, but they'll appreciate what I have to offer. Now, here's another uh, caveat. If I bring the wrong customer in, then the ad that I've run does not necessarily match the shop that I have, and it creates doubt in the customer's mind. So let's run an ad for uh, a high-end customer. Hey, uh, bring your BMW to us because we are the best BMW shop in the world, and uh, let's even entice them with a, uh, uh, a first-time customer uh, gift. So uh, if you give us a try, uh, we will give you $50 towards your first service of repair. That's how sure we are you're going to love us. So now, uh, however um, I got it, I saw your ad, uh, I got your flyer, uh, I watched your TV commercial, I heard your radio ad, and I said to myself, wow, this sounds like a shop that I'd like to go into and work on my BMW. And I walk into your shop, and there's a bunch of Toyotas and Hondas kind of tore up, older, uh, beat up. The shop is greasy and dirty. Um, I, I, I don't even see another BMW in the whole shop. And um, I'm starting to think, wow, if this is how they take care of their shop, I wonder how they're going to take care of my BMW. So what we've done with our advertising is we attracted the wrong customer. Uh, we should have been going for the 999 oil change guy or maybe the 2299 oil change guy because when he came in he'd be driving a Honda or a Toyota and uh, he would feel comfortable in your shop even if it wasn't as clean as it uh, ought to be because it's a $22 oil change. It's not a you know, uh, $123 service. Um, now let's do it the other way around. Let's have a really nice shop. Let's have uh, uh, marble countertops. Let's have our service advisors in a button down with our, our logo. Uh, let's put them in a nice pair of slacks. And uh, let's have a really clean uh, shop with a really good impression. And let's have a customer waiting area with leather chairs and a big 70 inch flat screen TV on the wall for the customers and snacks and etc. And then I run the 999 oil change and uh, my guy in the you know uh, 13 year old Toyota uh, comes in with his 999 oil change. And he looks around and he says, oh my gosh, this can't be a 999 oil change place. And in his mind, there's doubt created and he knows what's gonna happen. He's thinking about it. He says, man, they're gonna find a bunch of stuff and they're gonna try to sell me all this crap because they gotta pay for all this. And uh, indeed, that's exactly what we do. We look at his car and we find a long list of things that need to be done. And we start to talk to him about it. And now we've proved in him right. His opinion is now in stone. So it is very, very important that you determine the kind of customer that you want to do business with and that you should do business with. And it's very important that you match your marketing and your services, the way you look, the way you feel, the way you answer the phone, the way you treat the customer to that customer. Now in our next tips, we're going to be talking about some of the marketing things that we need to do. We call those the core seven and we hope to see you in our next tips. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's tip. For more information on the concepts we discussed, check out our upcoming classes at www.ifrabe.com forward slash classes or listen to the Leading Edge podcast at institutesleadingedge.podby.com where we discuss business topics just like this one with a panel of industry experts. You can also contact us whenever it's convenient and we'll set up a free consultation on how the Institute can help you better your business, your life, and the industry as a whole. We'll see you guys next week.